going to move from business to the newspapers. Of course, you might have noticed we were talking a lot about French politics earlier on in the programme, so I expect that's what Flo's uh, going to talk about. Lots of focus on this final round of the left-wing primary. 59% of the vote uh, Benoit Amon got, didn't he, Flo? Uh, beating his... Uh, rival um, Manuel Valls. That's right, former uh, Prime Minister Manuel Valls, the big loser, but there was a big winner, mm -hmm. Benoit Hamon, Hamon champion. He's on the front page of uh, 20 Minutes today. I guess it looks like he's kind of blowing a kiss here to all the people <laughs> who, uh, who voted for him. And 20 Minutes has an interesting take on his victory. Uh, it says that it has a taste of revenge, mm -hmm. because you might remember uh, that Benoit Hamon was part of Manuel Valls's uh, government. Uh -huh. He was the uh, Minister of Education, and he left uh, in quite a scandalous way in 2014 with a whole lot of other socialist rebels over disagreements about policy with Monsieur uh, Valls. Yeah, the final round really was seen as a battle of the two versions uh, of the left, wasn't it? Valls kind of in the centre of the left and then Amon further uh, on the left. Uh, and, and that battle has really shone through through this uh, campaign. That's right. And of course, in that battle, there was one victor and that was the left wing of the left. And so that victory is really getting a lot of attention today. Let's take a look at the front page of Libération, uh, the left wing paper uh, that says that you can see they're talking about une gauche de gauche. It's, it's kind of a, a, an interesting headline that's saying the left is really on the left because a lot of people were starting to doubt that with uh, Prime Minister Manuel Valls. He was moving so, the government so much more and more to the center, almost to the right, that a lot of people wondered what is the future of the left? Well, here is the future of the left, according to Liberation, this very left-wing left. It's a triumph of the deep left, if you will. Uh, and Liberation, it must be said, is, is quite happy uh, about this outcome and says, you know, for a long time now, people have been wondering, does the Socialist Party have a future? Is the Socialist Party dead? Well, according to Liberation, it's not dead, it's twitching, uh, and its chances of survival are growing. That being said, though, uh, this victory also comes with great responsibility. Uh, and Liberation says that if the left really wants a fighting chance in the presidential election that's just a couple of months away, well, he has a lot of work because he needs to bring the whole party together. Well, Flo has found out that some of the other papers are not so optimistic. Many wondering, of course, if he's going to be able to convince his party as a whole to uh, back him in the uh, presidential election. That's right, and that's what's so ironic, is that he has won this primary, but it's not even clear if all the people who voted in that primary are actually going to back him in the election. Let's take a look at the front page of L'Opinion. Uh, they're saying, look... He won the primary, but the P Socialist Party is on the verge of a schism, kind of like you can see in a, in a big religion, you know, mm -hmm. having two currents here. Now, what you can see in this cartoon is Benoit Hamon looking a lot like an Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, <laughs> he's holding these roses of victory. And in the background there, you can see an exodus. And so he says, I have to stop this exodus because mm -hmm. members of the Socialist Party, uh, many of them are actually tempted to either go more to the left than Hamon, to go and vote for someone like Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the far left, or they're tempted to go more towards the center and fall into the arms of someone named Emmanuel Macron, who is neither on the left nor on the right. He's very much in the center, and so people are tempted by that that way as well. He's got a tough job, isn't he? I mean, papers saying uh, that Amon can't rest on the laurels of his victory, and his work is really cut out for him now. Uh, that's right. Lacroix, Croix, the Catholic paper, so says, look, winning the primary may have been tough, but the hardest remains ahead. Poor guy, he just won this primary, and yet he he has so much work to do. Uh, similar analysis on the front page of L'Humanité as well that says, look, nothing left than everything remains to be done. But it must be said, the communist paper is thrilled that Valls is out of the picture. Mm -hmm. He was punished by his own party. OK, well, some of the... Speaking of uh, Manuel Valls, the former prime minister, several papers trying really to figure out how on earth he lost this. That's right, the autopsy of a defeat. Uh, you can read that uh, in several papers. I put, pulled out this article from Le Figaro. Now, the truth of the matter is he really didn't see it coming. When he decided to run, he thought he was going to win. And behind the scenes, his supporters are really having a hard time hiding their bitterness. For instance, this article quotes one of his supporters saying, look, the candidate who won doesn't represent the party line. He's always criticising... Uh, everything, many of us Val supporters are considering maybe voting for Macron. Well, while the left was uh, choosing its presidential candidates, conservative candidate Francois Fillon was holding a rally in Paris, his uh, first official rally, uh, his first public meeting after the so-called Penelope Gate um, scandal erupted last week. That's right. Now, this, of course, happened last week. French papers uh, revealed that his British wife, Penelope, was paid half a million euros for allegedly a fake job as his parliamentary assistant. I will not let myself be intimidated, François Fillon told his supporters. So you can see Le Figaro reporting about this meeting. He's standing up for himself, rallying his troops. Uh, 
And there's another interesting article in Le Parisien that's looking at how François Fillon's fans are, mm. are uh, reacting to this. Well, they're not worried about it at all. They expect the whole thing to just blow over. Uh, but you can see in, in Le Parisien, they're talking about how he was troubled, but very combative as well. But it's a very uncertain election that we're going to. Uh, if we take a look at Le Figaro today, they have a very interesting poll. In fact, one of the latest uh, polls about the upcoming election that says that if the election were held tomorrow, well, Marine Le Pen would come in first in the first round, 25 percent, Fillon, 22 percent, Macron, 21 percent. So you can see the gap there uh, that's getting smaller and smaller. It's a very uncertain election. Flo, I really want to talk about a handball, but we run out of time. We can't. You have to look at the front page. Sorry. <laughs> handball next World time, maybe. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Flo, we know with the papers. Next half hour, how do you encourage a more balanced form of Islam? We'll be following a couple of students from a programme set up by France in a deal with Morocco. They aim to train up imams with that more balanced view. So is it working? We'll find out.